As you create classes in your applications, you'll find yourself often wanting to account for one-to-many relationships and wanting your classes to account for those as well. For example, customers have orders. So you'd like to create an orders property in the customer class and then store instances of the order class in there. So if a customer has four orders, that orders property would have four instances of the order class. Well, how do you do that? One way you can do that is to use an array list. And an array list provides methods for adding and removing instances. But the problem is array lists store objects. And therefore, you're going to be finding yourself converting back and forth from objects to your specific types. A better alternative is to use the generic list class instead. This provides similar capabilities as the array list does, but it also provides type safety and better performance. So let's see a demo of using generic lists. In previous sections, you saw the customer class and also the order class. Well, there is a relationship between customers and orders. Customers have orders. So what we want to be able to do is create instances of the orders class that belong to a customer and have our classes reflect that. Well, let's see how we can do that. I'm going to run the list of orders example. And in here, we'll create an instance of the customer class, assign a name and an ID. Then we'll create two instances of the order class. Order 1001 was placed today, 100 units at $1,000 each. That total cost is 100,000. Order number two, order 1002 was placed a week ago, 50 units at $4,000 each, that cost is $200,000. Well, right now we have an instance of the customer class. We have two instances of the order class, but these orders do not belong to the customer class at the moment. What we want to do is create that one-to-many relationship. One way we can do that is to create a property on the customer class to store orders. So let's look at the orders list property in the customer class. This is defined as an array list. An array list serves a similar function to an array. It's a way to group related objects. So the orders list property is an array list, and the private field orders array list is used in the property setter and getter. So now let's come back to the code here, and let's add order1 and order2 to the orders list. We can see now that this customer has two items in the orders list. They're both instances of the order class. Here's order 1001. And here's order 1002. Well, the problem with the array list is that it stores objects. And you can store anything you want in an object. And therefore, we can write code like this. Let's uncomment that code and back up and run this. Let's create a variable called order3 as a string and set it equal to missing information and add that to the orders list. Then we'll create order4 as a new instance of the directory info class and add that to the orders list. And now the orders list contains four objects, two of which are orders, one of which is a string, and one of which is directory info. This is going to cause problems. Let's list the orders. We'll display that Big Industries has four orders. And then for each customer order as an instance of the order class in the orders list, we'll display the order ID and the order date, the units, the unit cost, and the total cost. Well, that works for the first order in the list because that is an instance of the order class. And it's going to work for the second order because that's also an instance of the order class. But remember the third order is a string and this code is going to cause an exception. Because we're trying to take the third element in order list and cast it to an instance of order. But you can't because it's a string. 
And so using the array list and being able to store anything into it causes a runtime error. Let's stop this. Let's comment out this code. And let's see what we can do about this. As an alternative, we have an orders property. And the orders property in the customer class is a generic list. And it's a generic list of orders. So we're specifying that this orders property will only contain instances of the order class. So now let's come back here and run this code again and see how using a generic list changes things. We'll create the customer, we'll create the two orders, and we'll add these orders to the orders property. So now orders, once again, has two elements in it, and they're both orders. Now watch what happens if we try and do this. Uncomment this code, and at compile time, we're told we can't do this. We can't add a string to the orders property because that orders property is a generic list of order. And so at compile time, we're prevented from doing this. That's one of the benefits of using generics for type safety is that rather than get a runtime error when you store something inappropriate in the orders list, you get a compile time error preventing you from doing it in the first place. So let's comment that and continue to run this code. And we can see the two orders for this customer. The list contains the ability to sort, just like an array. So we can call the sort method on this list of orders and use the default sort order defined in the order class. Because the order class implements iComparable and therefore provides a compare to method that takes an order as a parameter and compares two orders based on the total cost. So let's sort that list and then display the orders sorted by total cost. We can also continue to use generic comparisons because we'll want to sort on things other than the default sort order, such as date. So we'll use the compare order dates method, which takes two orders and compares them based on order date. So now we can sort the orders by date. and display these orders now sorted by date instead of total cost. So what you've seen in this example is using generic lists to store a collection of orders that belong to the customer class. And the benefit of the generic list over the array list is that you have type safety and better performance. The array list stores objects. So there's converting from object to orders and back, potentially. In addition, you can store anything you want in an array list, including things that aren't objects, including things that aren't orders. Using the generic list prohibits that at compile time. And then you also saw that the generic list has similar capabilities to the array list. You can default by sort order, since the order class implements iComparable. You can also use generic comparisons to sort in any other order.